It's Sunday, it's August 7th, 2022. I'm not feeling well um, for some reason. Yesterday, um, we went to the family gathering on August 6th um, with the Gunders, uh, Linda's brothers, um, and one sister that's still alive. And my, the family really that was, while I was being raised in the one area, the only family exposure that I ever saw, or once a, twice a year, once for 4th of July and once for Christmas Eve. Other than that, once I started school, there was no real interaction other than that. Um, so we went out, uh, Tommy had a gathering, so we went out to see him. Um, and so, um, for some reason, um, it was just my stomach turned on the way home. And I was fine all day. I was with Lewis today at the art museum in Roslyn. And then my stomach turned again. Just real nausea. I don't know why. Out of nowhere. Um, today, on this calendar, I don't know if this is the last calendar, Linda threw out all my other calendars. And then this one arrived from Ohio. Uh, it says today is August 7th. And it says it's Purple Heart Day. Although, I listened to the news this morning. I didn't hear anything about it. So, um, even though the news says today's like National Lighthouse Day, whatever, and there's a ship that came in, tall mast, it said, and the tropical blue, not the navy blue, but the tropical blue, what they called it, had a whole U.S. Coast Guard thing going on, which integrates into, even though I'm not feeling well, I'm pushing through this, um, in order to make mention, because there's two rather large issues going on at the moment that I'm not happy with. Um, one of them is they mention at the CBS this morning, 8 a.m. hour, 7 a.m. and 8 a.m. were so chocked full of importance um, this morning in... I'm not going to highlight all the features of the pieces of the Coast Guard that I have no access to. I mean, again, I'm watching them in such awe and admiration of things that were never introduced to myself, uh, were never even an option. I don't know why. I'm part of this U.S. supposedly. I mean, they have some land hold over America, it, North America, it appears. Why? Nobody's ever explained. Um, but this Governor Abbott in Texas, which just so happens to be the last name or the name of some brand laboratory making me feel like a laboratory animal for some reason, is pushing these migrants, I don't want them in my city, but he's bussing them halfway across the country. They say they don't even want to come to New York. Great, we're in the middle of a health crisis. I need to limit the amount of pathogens and contagions in my area. And yet I have some crazy loon based in Texas, sending buses of human pathogens and contaminants into the already diverse field of bioterror called New York that's experiencing something called a coronavirus, a COVID, and several monkeypox. Polio just showed up in Rockland County. Um, hello? state of emergency, like public health crisis, and you decide now's the best time, Governor Abbott, to put, like, strangers who haven't been quarantined on a bus and send their p 
pathogens of whatever they've accumulated and parasites and God only knows what else on a bus and you're sending several buses? Are you all crazy? I think so in the humanity category. You're making things worse. I mean, how about like a nobody moves? Like it's musical chairs and the music stops and you don't got a chair? Freeze. That's it. And deal with what we got. I don't understand why everybody just keeps rearranging chairs. And now, I mean, the day before the first bus arrived, in the evening news, they're like, they, they put up this message, semi-intelligent message, that says, all right, so they're planning this new bus terminal in Port Authority, whoever the hell they are, and they're going to put up four buildings of either residential or commercial, they're not quite sure what the hell's going to go in there. But whatever revenue from there is going to pay for... I mean, like, this is a squatter situation at, like... I mean, between the state and the federal, I'm like... And then I got Tropical Blue telling me that they are now going to rearrange their, their deck in to face the nation what the f4 we're under like attack and massive migrations that are not allowed in some sociopathic like i don't know i don't know who's making like moves like these and then like then they have on this thing about ll cool j and like rock the bell yesterday Rock the bell, really. And then they sent livery taxi cab drivers who are so grateful for being New Yorkers and however the hell they are got here. And they're the ones with the jobs driving cars and things. They sent personal... There were 14... On the second bus that arrived, there were 14 persons. And they, they were out there to show solidarity. So I got to rock the bell with the hippity hop kids in the wrong nation and accumulating there. It's like they're painting over the city in their own image. Um, I'm pretty sure there's some religious text on this and there's some laws written in my favor. So this way I'm protected along with my children, considering that they've invaded my healthcare system and now I can't even get the correct answers. They want to put, I mean, the lore of the sea. It's a German, they said it was a German built tall mast ship, the Tropical Blue Kids, that came over here after we won something with Nazi Germany. And I don't even want to say those words because the noses still, I mean, like, are they out of joint? I mean, it's better than a punch in the nose was the only thing that my Red Cross special grandfather gave me and whatever. But I don't want to upset the Blue Cross kids because I got some real problems in... Where is this, like, North Atlantic Treaty Organization? I'm just curious, because there's some serious problems. Like, like real serious problems. And they've locked me into some situation with, like, two really serious violations that are going unspoken of, but I've had some really serious situations that I've been thrust into that I don't even have the full itinerary on because they're hiding it from me. Or they're hi I mean, like, I don't know if they're hiding the people that documented it for me, or if they're hiding the actual facts that led up to these really serious situations that then I've gone through serious health crisis because of the serious with what's dragging behind me in adult males within the same life frame, one at 1976 and one at 1975, that's a real effing problem for the star that arrived in 1978. And I'm pretty sure 1977, 1983, and 1984. I had one cousin yesterday at one favorite cousin. <laughs> it looks like a Viking. Or at least that's what the 
word was, the buzzword was at the party yesterday, which I went up and I said to him, I said, so you want to know what people are talking about you today? I said, the word is, is that you look like a Viking. And he was so happy to be called a Viking. And I was so happy to deliver that message because he is just everything I thought he would grow into. One of my cutest cousins ever. And so, and I re-verified what year he was. So 1983 and Thor's Day doesn't get upset about this 1984 person that was whatever in whatever, whatever and sibling rivalry that like I'm not even asking for it's like ugh, this is just such an issue <sighs> so anyhow so there's a whole lot of this rivalry they mentioned they preface it um, today with this border issue with Abbott and Texas and then this this govern this um, not governor the mayor guy uh, Adams, which doesn't look like the European Adams. He's somebody else's choice who looks like rocking the bells and LL Cool J in this whole, they're repainting the town in their own self image. It's a problem. It, I've had it up to here with all of them because they're like the children partying in someone else's house and not listening to the management and the guidance that was left in order to communicate with the adults elsewhere between motherland, fatherland, and like a cosmic nursery that's out of control. Just saying. And I got kids on the field on top of it that are looking to our generation now as if we're the adults and we're supposed to teach them the right thing now because there's some serious issues and I don't know even how or where to go to address them. So, um... They mention this new influx of 14 after the first bus arrived. This is the second bus with another 14. They call it a border battle and they spell it B-O-R-D-E-R. -E and I'm like, okay, so is that like boarding a horse or is that like boarding a canine? Like at the facility, like at the rescue facility, it seems to be like, why? I mean, New York City is past its capacity for health, public health. They got yo-yos up there that don't even look the part. And there's some CEO of public health, really? Then have them executed. Because why are they allowing more people to enter the city for like long-term residency or short-term residency? when we already have a health crisis going on right now. I mean, all air travel should have just been cut and then dealt with the public health crisis and put people back where they belong. But I don't know, is that like just too simple of like strategic commands and like logic that makes sense? Like why is it so hard to accomplish? Like in actuality, I mean, I'm asking the generation before, like Lewis's generation. I'm the greatest actress ever. I mean, I go out with my dad. You would have no idea what's going on in the fight at home. But him and I don't even fight at home. I sit quietly and I'm making records for my son doing the battles to tell them what's going on in grandpa's section. And in fact, I actually asked my dad, I said, you want to do me a favor for my sons? Would you sit down with me? And just looking at my son who was delivered in 2012 and looking at where New York is in your opinion, being that he was a principal of security. Why don't you tell me what my son needs to know and what I need to know since f while I was in banking and finance and I had my seven, my six, my 63, my 65, my like whatever else. And I know things. I wasn't following the companies, the CEOs, the pictures, the profiles, and like the word game that went on in that particular sector while I was being hunted, abused, neglected at times, and then harmed in really severe ways that I don't even know how my body is still functioning. I mean, it's not at optimal peak performance, that's for sure. Not that it couldn't be fixed. It's just that the 
problems that are, are arriving in New York seem to outnumber the participants actually trying to help me the effort and my situation for whatever stupid reasons in their human conundrum that they've caused and now pulled the rest of us into like this is this is my inheritance oh we we could have a long conversation on that on how unhappy I am that this is what I've inherited just as baby boomers are about to die off and leave us in an even worse state than before I mean like did we not get a head start on this no I mean I was locked in a room I thought that Things were settled out. Marriage was on track and I would have gone to the correct person. Some correct persons did arrive. I just am not quite sure where the follow through is because instead I got some crazy donkey and some really big problems. And then I was hunted in my own homeland like an animal after the shitbags in charge who caused it hit in conspiracies cover-ups and made up some new laws, passed some new penal colony codes just to protect themselves and make me look like I was even further in the wrong. And then, however they translated that story, who the F knows, because nobody lets you know anything when you're the one who's in harm's way and they keep just throwing more dirt over your burial plot. Here we are. What's going on in the headlines? Well, let's take a look. Since there still are children on the field, no matter how many days, if my days are numbered somehow and connect the dots, here we are. So this is the beginning of CBS This Morning at 8 a.m. Just on Channel 2. Just so we give credit where credit's due for whoever puts on this production of some form of artwork, some form of federal traded commissioned communication standard of sorts. And then my truncated version, when I take out the possible classified information, even though they've got boots in the field of the enemy is already here and it's being broadcast, but some of us still need to learn things since this level of intelligence like U.S. Coast Guard vocabulary or the tropical blue vocabulary, while some of it's integrated into my vocabulary, like this whole thing with Alex Jones now. Now I'm like, he's like, they're not real. Okay, well, here's the thing. Um... Since I don't want to see Alex Jones get in trouble um, for trying to do whatever, bury, unbury the bone and the whatever that he does in his, however, he's connected to the main facility problem that keeps us like, oh my God, how are we going to handle this? And like, no, this is not a fun game. Like, it's really, it's not. My health's on the line. It's deteriorating. And there's been no male figure that was promised in like every text and artwork piece from ancient times until now. Like keep them apart when you have a twinning is never an option because then it messes up the cosmic nursery and what comes next. And then the genetics fall out because I'm in an anatomically timed clock system. I look human-ish. I age and I am affected by the environment like other humans, except I have an itemized cosmic connection to where the universe was created and then where it's split in a interesting twin with a third leg twin in a delta that like you got it you built nasa like i mean i i heard on the radio the guys explaining how the inside of a nasa suit works with boiling points and like carbon dioxide overload and having to unplug an umbilicus i'm like where's that level of intelligence because like i have some real serious health issues i could figure out on my own if i only had a couple of those like really like intricate they have otherworldly knowledge and i could really integrate it into what my health is experiencing at the moment so i could figure it out on my own i just need a couple of like 
intelligent people, which don't exist in this level of New York that I'm trapped in. Snorting. <sighs> The border battle with Texas continues. This as a second bus of migrants. So now they preface this as border battle. Now, uh, I've watched this news as a human, as a New Yorker, as if I was Lynn and Lou, and then as if I was my children. And I'm watching it. And if I was Ben, I'd say, yes, yeah, so. So Texas is on the border of Central, I don't even think you'd go with Central America, but it's on the border between the United States and whatever's below us in Mexico. And so that's the border. Yeah, it's not that simple. We're talking deep state. We're talking like deep state of consciousness in this abstract world, but he was not cultured that way because of the problem I had going out in public with them, with certain other security breaches while this crap's going on, as if this is important. ...has just arrived in New York City. We'll have the latest. Plus, the search continues for a man accused of assaulting a... So that's one version of it, which is border battle. Then they put up their um, red versus blue state at the Port Authority, which I find really interesting. I'm like, okay, is Scandinavia having like a squabble that like is really impacting the New Englanders? I'm just, just curious because... Like, I'm like, okay, red cross, blue cross, one, two, three. I mean, like, red light, green light, one, two, three. It's Finland's the blue cross. Red cross, I, I, I was my grandfather, but he was Italy, so that gets confusing in how they were integrated into whatever system and important, like, symbolic features. Knowing that they were having cosmic children delivered Almost like the movie Dumbo with the stork and all the animals, but the zoo, and then it was winter. And then I'm like, whoa, why is Adams in a winter term if Dumbo knew then? I mean, how, who's working Emerald City at the Wizard of Oz? I'm just curious at this point. I did notice Peggy Guggenheim was mentioned in the meta of surrealism at this Nassau art thing that I went to today. I was like, now Lewis, I was like, can I take a picture of just the words? Cause it looks like it comes out of a textbook and it says it has like a quote at the top and there's no artwork in it. It's, I was like, but is that considered art? He had no idea. He said, I'd rather you not take photos like that, Nicole. He's like, cause there's a lot of people here. And I'm like, but how am I supposed to remember all the names? <laughs> He's like, you look it up, and I'm like, but I don't have the names. So one name that stuck out was Peggy Guggenheim, because that's where I met Nicholas the first, or the really angry somebody who said that he was going to have to conquer or learn this word about Mark, because there's a lot. It's a it's a word that they built a lot of things off of. So here we are. Here's this mention of the red state versus the blue state. I'm not saying it. It's what some FTC, FCC, whatever, put on this morning. It's blue state versus red state in a border battle. A second busload of migrants traveling from Texas has just arrived in New York City. We have the latest. Plus, neighbors react after... All right, now here's the part where it's actually part of the story, but I wanted that caption of border battle, red versus blue with Cindy shoes. <laughs> it was a state issue and just, I don't know which state. Second bus carrying migrants is now here in the city from Texas. The governor of Texas sent these asylum seekers after a war of words with Mayor Eric Adams. CBS 2's Christina Fan joins us live from the Port Authority bus terminal where that bus arrived this morning. Christina? Good morning. 
morning, Cindy. That second bus load of about 14 migrants just got here, and immediately all of those families got into waiting taxi cabs who took them to their final destination free of charge. We want to show you video of Mayor Adams greeting that crowd. Well, this is interesting here. I mean, again, I don't have a stock photo, like a National Geographic, like of what area of Mexico they're coming from. I've heard people use the word Tijuana as like this landing spot, but are they being, I mean, like, when you get to Ellis, it's a ship that brings you out through Ellis Island. They were quarantined that way. I'm just, I don't understand why we're already in a public health crisis. How anybody could just bus people here. And we're already having problems with wastewater, contaminations, all sorts of monkey pox, people breaking out. I've had anemia for, I can't, I mean, it's been a while. It's been an ongoing problem. I know there are people here who know about it in New York. I know there's people elsewhere outside of New York that know about it. What I'm not quite sure about is why they're totally disregarding the public health crisis and they're doing some political stunt work despite the health factors that should be utmost important in person and he says this is the new york city he wanted the asylum seekers to experience a place that is supportive and compassionate when did we become an asylum state or sanctuary state i don't remember ever being asked not in any of the grades i've ever graduated from not in from any of the high schools or the junior high schools I've ever graduated from. Not in any of the training I've ever been through. Nobody has ever come to me and asked me if these people from elsewhere that are not part of the big five of acceptable in some social studies with passport that already migrated in and had migratory patterns through some regulated regulatory process with elsewhere that was acceptable at some point i don't even know what happened to that because i can't even get a hold of any of my ancestors and in case anybody wants to know the health of the 10 that linda came from there's people have already died off the younger siblings no less have died off before the older siblings and the cousin content of like generation x ish doesn't look that healthy they're all right they're some of them are standing but for the most part mm, the starting point of their journey. Texas Governor Greg Abbott started busing migrants to New York last week as he battles with President Biden over immigration policy. On Friday, the first bus with about 40 migrants arrived at the Port Authority bus terminal. Abbott says they were removed from Texas border towns that are overwhelmed and said New York City is an ideal destination because of the abundance of city services and housing Mayor Adams has boasted about. Adams today blasted the move. It's unimaginable uh, that what uh, the governor of Texas has done, when you think about this country, a country that has always been open uh, to those who were fleeing a persecution. No, 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 no. See, we were not open to people fleeing persecution from elsewhere. I don't know who started that dirty rumor. We also don't go into other people's homelands, chain them on ships, and drag them into a state that they don't belong in and that doesn't want them, have resources, have jobs, have nice, loving, caring homes. We don't do, we're not supposed to do any of that stuff. So what are the humans up to? Because it looks like a real disaster, and I haven't been part of any of this. 
It's almost like they've been functioning on their own, which is really frightening. In some conflicting or competing, like who's gonna win the battle for like Middle Middle Earth? And other untolerable uh, un 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 conditions. Uh, we've always welcomed that, and this governor is not doing that. And Where does he get his? script from those words where did who allowed him to say that on camera this morning is that like his camp of people that are now here and are now like i mean i heard this thing in russia they call it a penal colony i'm like now is that like a pastoral term is that like we're being penalized somehow because it's what it really feels like if I break down modern English in a like, what did you all do? In Texas, but we are going to set the right message, the right tone of being here for these families. The mayor today also asked. You know what I don't see? No, because, like, this ties into the lure of the sea and the Coast Guard. Um, I don't see Bavaria. I don't see Germany. I don't see Poland. I don't see anything Scandinavian walking through the Port Authority doors. So are they allowed to go into and this recruiting and hiring change to reflect the faces of the nation? No. Stay where you are at the moment until the land starts to, like, reshape itself back to where we were, because this is ridiculous. Otherwise, take the ships and go bring them back to the harbors where they came from and make sure to take the ancestors that were there back to where they belong. Because I don't want to live in a city that's full of new pathogens, new contaminants in an unsterile field. My health is too important. I haven't enjoyed the quality of life does not exist in New York for my person. Not since 1978. I have not enjoyed a single day of this life. It's just been like tasks just to get through until someone in management comes to rescue us and move us or fixes the real existential problem. But this is what the mayor is welcoming into the city. On whose order? Coast Guard, the Tropical Blues earlier today, mentioned something about some person by the name of Princess Anne. And he's and and John, the meteorologist guy, goes, You know that family. I'm like, who is that family? Like, I've never they don't this is going on. And in the schools that I have been in, there's been no mention. I mean I don't, they didn't even mention Queen Elizabeth of England. There's been one guy, Charles, they've mentioned, and he's got two kids. One princess, it was Diana, but she died. And there's been no replacement names. There's been no, like, who's, who's up next? Like, I mean, what, we're just left here by ourselves? I mean, hello, humans. Where did the gods go? So that's what Mayor Adams is now welcoming into the city because some governor from Texas, with however he got elected and whatever he's into, just decided to put path like human flesh with unknown pathogens and contagions on buses and send them to New York City. And now this concert went on yesterday, which is part of this hip hop record collection of what was going on from previous generation into my generation. 
It's turned out in Queens on Saturday for a hip hop festival hosted by two time Grammy winner LL Cool J. CBS 2's Celia Perez has more on the event from Forest Hills. Some of the biggest names in hip hop took the stage at the inaugural day long event, Rock the Bells Festival. Did they just call that inaugural? In inaugural? Like, isn't that the word they use for presidential? I just want to make sure Prime Minister is seated and, like, knows what's going on here. It's a little confusing because I don't remember ever, like, LL Cool J, he's now getting a ticket to presidency. Like, what is going on? I mean, even the words they use are so misconstrued. At the Forest Hill Stadium. <laughs> Looking forward to looking at the culture, putting on a showcase for 90s artists, people who have been around for like 20 years, and that's exactly what happened. So they fulfilled my dreams, so I'm good. The event, named after LL Cool J's brand, Rock the Bells, was hosted by the hip hop icon, who is also from Queens. LL Cool J rose to fame with songs like Going Back to Cali and Mama Said Knock You Out. He was the first. Going Back to Cali and Mama's Gonna Knock You Out. Hmm. There is this whole East Coast, West Coast rap thing at some point. And like, what's in the rapper? Like, do I want to know? I mean, I got kids, like, keep it clean. Like, what's going on in this rap game? Because, like, they're in the early 90s. They were killing one another. But, like, what did you all do? Like, almost like... Whose soul did you sell out? I'm just curious. Because my kids are not reaping, reaping any benefit from what the hell happened in the 80s and 90s. Ten consecutive platinum-selling albums and was recently inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Earlier this week, he spoke with CBS Mornings. It's a completely immersive experience. It's like an opportunity for people that, you know, love the music, yeah. who love the musicality of it, who love the creativity, who love the artistry, to just enjoy themselves as food, activations. It's going to be crazy. One day... Activations. God, that word just... My best Bavarian self is so frightened of what the hell that word means. Activations of what? And as part of the experience, all ticket holders were able to dine at the first all rapper owned food court. I've been looking for a great time. History, uh, Queens, the city's opening back up. All these great performers from when we were young. My favorite moment so far was when Busta Rhymes came on and he just hyped up the whole crowd. He's awesome. The energy is just great. Everybody's having a good time. Organizers say partial proceeds from ticket sales will be donated to the Universal Hip Hop Museum in the Bronx. In Forest Hills, Thalia Perez, CBS 2 News. And on that note, let's rewind a little bit, see what she's talking about. Mayor Adams announced more than $5 million in new capital funding for Bronx-based cultural organizations, including the Universal Hip Hop Museum. Construction of the museum's new 52,000 square foot home at the Bronx Point Development began last May. It'll include several gallery spaces, a black box theater, and interactive exhibits. We can use the experience of these men and women here to reform how we use music to educate our children to not only build this project, to make sure the young people on this project don't have a steel gun, but a steel hammer, so they can be part of the construction. Why are they building it all? Why are, like, it, it is almost like they've knocked down the city that was built purposely and carefully, so capacity wasn't an issue. And they just built up to add more space, but then they totally blew out public health and safety standards. It's like throwing all caution to the wind at the detriment of all of the people involved that 
have no choice or say because they just keep railroading or paying politicians or paying some lobbyist to write some laws their way while the rest of us get more and more sick and the 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 landscape doesn't even look the same anymore. Here's the whole thing with the main City story. City Mega Terminal is being promised as a replacement for the antiquated Port Authority bus terminal. On Thursday, Port Authority leaders and a newly hired design team detailed the multi-billion dollar project. In this rendering, you can see new ramps in red, new bus storage and staging in blue, and the new terminal in yellow. Below those, a green space is a park space across three and a half acres. It will no longer be outdated, undersized, and completely ill-designed. Local residents fought for the design to include a fix for one of their biggest concerns, idling buses in the streets. The project tucks them away in the new bus storage and staging facility. The target date for completion is sometime in 2031. Mayor Adams announced more than $5 million in new... Now, they... What they don't say on this is a particular three and um, a half acres. It will no longer be outdated. What they don't mention is these four buildings. They mention this on a different broadcast. Those four proposed buildings, they're going to put some kind of live human whatever that pays rent into the system, supposedly to fund this new terminal, but it's adding more pathogens and contagions into the system that's already completely under biological attack, meaning the wastewater and so on. But I mean, like, this is a larger existential problem because it's the same argument with this whole traveling and airline industry where they just keep shipping them everywhere with no quarantine. It's the same problem. I hate it at both edges. I hate it when they're not Romans, yet they're traveling. How did that ever come about? Who let that happen? Happening today, a second bus carrying migrants is set to arrive here in the city from Texas. The governor of Texas is sending these asylum seekers after a war of words with Mayor Eric Adams. CBS 2's Christina Fan joins us live from the Port Authority bus terminal where that bus is scheduled to arrive today. Good morning, Christina. Good morning, Cindy. Texas Governor Greg Abbott has warned of many more buses to come as he battles with President Biden over immigration policy. This past Friday, the first bus with over 40 migrants, including men, women, and children, arrived here in New York City, Abbott's new drop-off location, to remove them from Texas border towns that he says are overwhelmed. This morning, a second busload is expected to arrive at Port Authority bus terminal. Abbott says New York City is an ideal destination because of the abundance of city services and housing Mayor Adams has boasted about. In response, a spokesperson for Adams called the move, quote, an embarrassing stain on the state of Texas and is also calling on D.C. for help. We already have a housing crisis. Help us here, because not only is housing is translation services, is education, uh, it is uh, food. We have um, the knowledge to help them. We just need more resources to be able to. Uh, we don't have the knowledge to help them, no. No, 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 we do not. Because, let's put it this way, the humans did not have the knowledge or the resources to help me in my one situation that was cosmologically certain and easy to define what a biological clock is, that it keeps ticking like a ticking time bomb and things fall apart in really easy to explain when you're in the right class of intelligence, but really hard to explain in everyday people. Unless you have some fancy footwork going on or some like really strong network. So again, not really clear why this keeps happening and they keep missing the mark on the really easy things. Now this is going on. Anyone with Polio. permission to contact them. 
A team from the CDC is in New York to investigate the first polio case in the nation in a decade. Polio was reported in Rockland County last month. The county health department confirmed the case involves an adult resident who is unvaccinated. Since the case was reported, the virus has been detected in wastewater samples in Rockland County and nearby Orange County. State health officials are urging anyone who has not been vaccinated for the polio virus to do so immediately. The C now, again, the vaccination is a small H-E-R-D and herd whatever that that is important, but the bigger factor is how the hell did somebody get into Rockland County to defecate inside the wastewater treatment area carrying this virus? That's the bigger, more troubling question with everybody thinking that they just have free reign to just move around the earth cabin with like some free will program and putting all the rest of us in danger by this like constant shuffling. Now here's a picture of what the United States of America commander in chief and president looks like, which would be Joe Biden at this particular juncture of time and space. Um, and then it goes into New Jersey because now that New York is getting these busloads of problems or new things to contend with in we're already biologically attacked and in a dystopian environment and situation and they just keep adding more exponential problems or potential problems to the already exacerbated situation Crime is up also, in incidentally, I mean, I know there's some correlation, but people don't like to talk about it because then they're like, what are you trying to say? <laughs> I am just saying crime went up, biologic terrorism is going up, sickness and health problems are going up, and quality of life is going down in the greater New York area, including New Jersey. And like, there's some people talking about it. So let me just put them into this like montage of like whatever, paying homage to just the right people. So everybody gets their cameo say in one itemized, like some help would be nice. President Biden is working to make it easier to travel for an abortion after the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. He signed an executive order Wednesday directing the Secretary of Health and Human Services to consider actions to support patients traveling out of state, including through Medicaid. The move comes one day after voters in Kansas defeated an amendment to the state constitution that would have allowed lawmakers to ban or impose restrictions on abortion. The president says the voters of Kansas sent a powerful signal. This fall, the American people will vote to preserve and protect the right and refuse to let them be ripped away by politicians. Did he say this fall? I'm just curious. A similar measure to the one voted down in Kansas is on the ballot in Kentucky, while adding abortion protections to the state constitution are on the ballot in Vermont and California. Well, with car thefts in New Jersey on the rise, lawmakers are looking to make penalties much stiffer. As CBS News' Nick Calloway reports, police and prosecutors are on board with the effort. Now more than ever, New Jersey drivers have to lock up or risk losing their car. Last year, more than 14,000 cars were stolen statewide. This year, vehicle thefts are up 37% year to date. How ridiculous is that? It's pretty damn ridiculous. The worsening problem has led former governor and current state senator Richard Cody, a Democrat, to team up with Republican Senator Anthony Bucco to propose new legislation to... Time out. All of these really bad, bad ideas that the previous generation let happen over my life frame um, of letting just anyone in to the most exclusive club, which was supposed to be the United States of America. Like, like it was supposed to be exclusive.
and it had its set agree and treaties with whatever it had um, until something broke and then like, I don't know, this 20th century arose and now like there's lots of crime. What, what did you think was going to happen? They had lots of crime wherever they left and now they brought it with them because in this conundrum of problems that just keep getting worse now there's not enough food and money to go around so they start looking around for creative ways to fraud people out of money and take opportunity and build themselves in somehow and now there's some like secret fight over whatever's left over or what's here and not being handled properly to try and combat the crisis. The bipartisan bill was announced with plenty of support from police, prosecutors, and mayors. We've got to provide a deterrent. We have to provide a consequence. Criminals are targeting urban and suburban communities. Luxury cars are often stolen and shipped overseas. Others are being used to commit crimes around the tri-state area. Some thieves are becoming more brazen, going into houses like this one in Paramus while people are home to steal key fobs. It could happen anytime, day or night, and they will confront the owner. Police say criminals are using juveniles to steal the cars because they get lighter punishment. Because of bail reform, there's no harm to them, and it's disgusting, disgraceful, and we're going to have a killing at some point, unfortunately. It's a catch and release, a revolving door, and it's frustrating because now the residents question law enforcement as if we're not doing our job. The proposed bill would create... St well, see, that's the thing, is that you're not. <gasps> oh, right. Yeah, no, see, again, I got children on the field. I'm not lying to them. There was a great migration. There was a set migrational pattern. And then something happened that nobody's talking about. And now all of a sudden there's new people on the field that like if you're I mean, again, I saw the movie with Tom Hanks where they boarded the boat with machine guns and took them hostage. That's what New York feels like with this mayor and with what's going on. I got to be honest, in the middle of one of the. I mean, I didn't have a health crisis as a kid. They weren't talking about it. There were no, like, pathogens and contaminants. Like, I mean, isolation away from the city degregates while the professionals were handling it. But there was no talk of health crisis out in Long Island at that time. But here we are now, and it's a real serious issue that now my children have inherited which I still don't see being addressed properly. And it's like all the politicians are now scrambling on, whoa, whose checkbook wrote my political campaign fund like back in before they were born? Because guess what? Oh my God, somebody woke up and rang the bell. Okay, so all morning, which I'm not putting on, you'll just have to take my word for it because my stuff's usually spot on. Um, the U.S. Coast Guard has had staff that looked like it was one of the big five spoken about in New York City. Just recently, my son graduated fourth grade. I obviously graduated with him because I'm now going through his manual. Just like a light read on it because not everything do I agree with in that social studies text. However, there is some stuff that's pretty set in stone. And so um, one of them being the migra migratory past history with the past presidents, with the party system, and with what we're used to here um, in this area. And so that being said... There's some real serious issues going on in the corporation arena. Sports seems to be like intermingled with that, along with music and movies. And it was established at some point what the rules of engagement were. I just don't know what the hell happened. But here we are.
talking about it openly. I know it's not usually like PC, but like, hey, I got nothing left. So this morning, it looked pretty congruently like Bavarian. They did the thing this morning called The Dig about a Bavarian restaurant in Glendale. I met one person from Glendale. Not to start jealousy over this. And in all seriousness, the best built Scorpion King in the 1968 category I met once. Maybe more than once, but whatever. Came from Glendale. Did not realize the connection then. I certainly realized it this morning. They have this quaint restaurant in a lang in German, which I can't pronounce because it's not something that they spoke in the house. And I don't want to butcher the, the words. And it wasn't on something that I was able to learn my life from. But um, it was, I guess, their zoned heritage I did not realize when I met we'll call him Scorpion King because again I speak in like the cosmos and I know when he was born and just so my like little delta birthday triangle knows there's a symbol in his 311 in however order that goes that's symbolic and very important to me um, in whatever, whatever, whatever. So few humans that I actually would speak kindly of, he would be one of them. But here we are in this morning. It's been pretty congruent on what the crew looks like, what their hiring process looked like, what it should look like for this area in the Atlantic. And now and being that they are German built ships and whatever in the Scandinavian migration. But now all of a sudden with all this <laughs> Mayor Adams and Governor Abbott and this busloads of people being brought in and all sorts of, <clears throat> I have no idea how they arrived. Um, in this melting pot, they call it. I don't know what that's about. Now all of a sudden they want to change their hiring process for the Coast Guard. That's a really frightening thought. Do not let it reflect multi-nation. It, it's a nation. It's not multi-nation because right now multi-nation is what's been arriving in their food, their culture. There is nothing the same and they've already robbed us and oppressed us from being able to have whatever little our grandparents had. Because I'm not even able to like carry forward my grandfather's stuff. Because there's been so much taken away. And so little to be able to go after. Just been chopped up and given out to I don't know who. Is the commanding officer of the United States Coast Guard, Eagle. First off, I want to thank you for your service. Yeah. And I want to tell you how great it is to say Jessica is the commanding officer. The Coast Guard is changing, isn't it? it that sounds, Jessica, sounds like a very North American name. No, it just does. It just, it, in North America, it's, I grew up, no, I mean, like, I didn't have Jessica's in my school, but, like, it, they were in a movie somewhere. I had a doll once I named Jessica. I knew from Lou and his connections to, like, whatever, 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 and she was a concoction. It's an important name over here. It's a commoner name here, but it has importance. It is. It's uh, very uh, dynamic right now. We are um, absolutely just looking to be able to reflect what our nation looks like. And uh, the Coast Guard is constantly adapting to what the nation needs in terms of what we provide to this nation. How long? See, that's the thing. The nation's having a gender and identity crisis at the moment. And there's some really seedy, disgusting stuff where they've actually cut us off from fatherland elsewhere. So it becomes a real problem when, like, the military services stop hiring or allowing 
the seedlings and the gardening utilities that the previous generation had when people are cutting off the entry of like i was not taught coast guard i didn't even know what a coast guard was until today when they had this enlightening whatever i mean i don't know what an army is i mean i i i've seen movies they look very organized but i have no idea how do they recruit how do you find them then I heard through my son, there's something called an ROTC. I found that out by accident. And then I thought it was Air Force. Now today I find out they have a version of it in the Navy. Like, again, like, how do you, where do you get this level of education? See, there's something even larger wrong. So why are they changing and adapting at U.S. Coast Guard level when they have it in my generation even extended a hand to hold or of invitation into this like exclusive society, but yet they're taking all these asylum seekers in some humanitarian effort that are now causing a bigger problem mixed in with all this need to move about freely. Who have you been serving? So I've been in, uh, in the Coast Guard for 22 years. Wow, you started when you were a kid, too. <laughs> I did, I did. I was right out of high school. So we've been watching this morning uh, the, the cadet training up and down. I mean, it's just the process. This historic ship used to, you know, this, you know, the lore of the sea. But when you talk about navigating life, how old is your youngest child? Four months. <laughs> how? I just... I have to let that sink in. You had a baby less than half a year ago, and you're on tour right now. How do you navigate your life? So I really believe in the mission uh, of this vessel and absolutely love the Coast Guard. And I think, uh, you know, when, when you love what you do and you really believe in what you do, it, it, it sort of falls into place. Well, Vince, t take, a, take a tour here, and, uh, and we want to see you see uh, some friends from the Army. We have some young Navy uh, ROTC, the light blue shirts. What is the name of that uniform again? So that's our tropical, tropical blue uniform. And I do love the, the diversity. I love the camaraderie. So this is like the, the, the history of the Coast Guard. What's the future? So, you know, I think... Uh, we have, for 86 years, we have been training folks on board the Bark Eagle and really to prepare them to be able to adapt to what the Coast Guard needs in the future. I think we're going to... For what you need in the future. Okay, so are you then admitting that in my generation you didn't want me in and I wasn't allowed because I didn't fit the face of the changing nation prior to this 22-year career that you are now in? I'm just curious how the spin doctors are going to doctor this one up. I'm going to continue to train uh, Coast Guard cadets and officer candidates on board to prepare them to be future leaders in the service and really hopefully develop a liking for the sea and its lore, learn to uh, go outside of their comfort zone a little, work together as a team, and just uh, really be able to, uh, you know, provide what the service needs. What about you? You want to be Secretary of Defense? Uh, I'm not sure about that, no, but... Okay. <laughs> well, uh, ma'am, thank you for your service and thank you so much for inviting us on board. And uh, again, public tours start today at 10. Uh, come on board. Right now, Cindy, I know you know everything that she's talking about is true for you and your family, too. No, it's true. I, I wanted to say, as you know, I grew up a Coast Guard kid. My dad was a pilot. And so we moved every two to right. four years. And it was great. It's a great life. So if anybody's interested in getting to the military, one other thing I want to tell you, I love that you talked to so many women this yes. morning. And um, the Commandant of the Coast Guard is a, a female admiral. And she it's the first time that a woman is leading the branch, a branch of the armed forces. So, <laughs> lots of well, good again, stuff. it's reflecting. It's reflecting what the country looks mm -hmm. like. So the Coast Guard can serve the country. Yes, definitely. Thank you so much, Don. I mean, I love all your live shots. And like, here's the other thing that really doesn't sit well with me because I watched some of your movies, not all of them, all the way through because some of them make me sick, but. Um, if you have all this integration in the military service, what are you all fighting? If everybody gets along, why have a military? But if there's something to hide and protect, then why are you inviting everyone?
Why does nothing look the way that it's supposed to? And then, like, how do you keep classified information classified if you got this U.S. thing going on where, like, they're, like, I don't know, stationed in Africa and you're just like, right, you yeah, know, I've got, like, New York secrets I got to keep and take care of. How do we keep New York clean if, like, the, uh, I mean, like, these are the things that keep me up and make me really nauseous when, like, I really sit down and take apart what they're presenting as the good ideas and I'm like... I missed the boat because, again, like, nobody was, like, coming into Cold Spring Harbor, St. Dominic's, or St. John's and saying, here's what we have to offer. I think, like, you know, I mean, military service, do you want to join? Here's what we are. Here's what's available in menu of services. Where do you think you'd be a best fit? There was none of that. Where are they recruiting from then? I'm just curious. Is it only from like the sports kids and what they think is a good idea? Because I saw the amount of hires into the sports field that get paid million dollar, like millions and millions of dollars in purses while the rest of us aren't even being looked at in protect and defend our pathetic positions. But yet there's this accumulation of some scum like really getting thick and they seem to have like some, I don't know, power somehow that's like falsely inflated going on with some like exchange program that's even more frightening. Now here's another person at the 7 a.m. That was 8 a.m. hour. This is the 7 a.m. hour. Another person that mentions this problem with recruiting. Idell is the four mast captain, right? Correct. Uh, so again, and Vince, you can go ahead and, and, and take a tour. You've got these cadets. They go up, and what do they do when they get to that first level? So they're going to the tops, which is the first platform we have on our rig, which is about 70 feet up in the air. And so what they're doing is they're climbing up, safely transiting across and coming back down, which is their training for being able to climb up in our rig throughout their week on board. Everybody's harnessed, but you only tether when you're stationary, right? You tether when you're stationary or when you're transiting over a platform or going out onto a yard. Um, uh, this is great. I'm seeing young men and young women. There's a lot of diversity on this ship and in the Coast Guard, right? There is, absolutely. The Eagle is and a great opportunity for that diversity to further its uh, uh, the opportunities that we get here, whereas on uh, the Coast Guard Academy, they are doing phenomenally at recruiting yeah. all ethnicities, all races, and all genders. I got to talk about this. For where? Because they didn't do a really great job recruiting white people. I mean, I don't know about anyone else, but I wasn't asked. Lewis wasn't asked or given even it as an option. And nobody's approached me. I'm, I've had a National Guard call asking for Bisha or Benjamin, which again, I gave him Benjamin's phone number because I am actively hoping that Benjamin gets out of this problem and into a more intelligent network because I don't trust what's going on, not for their safety and future. This gem, the Eagle um, was built in 1936, where? Uh, Eagle was built in 1936 in Hamburg, Germany at the Blomenbach shipyard, originally named the Horse Vessel. And we were awarded this as part of war reparations after defeating the Nazis, right? Correct. In 1946, we took Eagle as reparations of war. We sailed her across the Atlantic and actually presented her to the American people here in New York City. So this ship, built in 1936, is the only active high, uh, tall, they call it a tall ship, right? Correct. It's a tall ship. They actually, the U.S. Navy has the Constitution, which is still a commissioned vessel, but we are still actively training and using this platform and transiting around the world on it. I, how cool is it for you to serve and sleep on a ship with this kind of rich history? I absolutely love the history and the opportunities I get to teach and spread that history that we have on Eagle and uh, love the opportunity of teaching all my future bosses as all the cadets from the Coast Guard Academy will someday be my boss. 
She is one of the luckiest women in the world. By far. She got the opportunity. Somebody went to her, whether it was a relative, whether it was her family, whatever it was. She had opportunity that I never grew up around or was introduced to. She has a vocabulary that I don't even have. I mean, I can hear the English words. I can fathom based on the nothingness that I've experienced between movies and the news or the current events. They don't really make, they kind of sort of in a not really way start to take shape and form the more that I listen to them and more that they present themselves. But for the most part, in a real life interaction, they don't exist. They just don't. They exist in their own whatever. And they're changing the landscape and the face is in my area. And they're taking my voice away in there having to be diverse. But their diverseness is causing serious issue. But they're being led by larger players, fund managers, travel and leisure artists that are causing massive disruption through some other process. Just is. I've been witnessing it. I've been documenting it. Now here, the meteorologist is talking about today being National Lighthouse Museum Day or Lighthouse Day or like whatever. Um, and he's talking about going from this small museum to this bigger museum and they can't do it alone. They need some, And then all of a sudden he goes back onto this ship with the U.S. Coast Guard and he speaks of this person, Princess Anne, I've never even heard of. And he says, from, you know, that family. <laughs> no, no, I don't. In looking for that higher power and who to reference... Or who to, like, put my hand up and say, could so-and-so help? There's no face. There's just a name, Princess Anne. Where does she come from? Does that have to do with Annie and the orphanage and Miss Hannigan? Because, like, there's a big serious problem and some realism in that surrealism from Hollywood, from, like, back in my day. When the sun will come out tomorrow? Yeah, clearly. He's here, and it's still a problem. By the way, do yourself a favor. Get that ticket in advance. And that is Building 10. That's how big they want to grow, from that to that. It's a joint effort. We can't do it alone, so we need help. And, of course, we need money. Trying to raise $35 million to expand this local jewel. Her Royal Highness Princess Anne is a patron. Yes, that's right. From that family, she's going to be uh, she's going to be making a visit here to help raise money. The city is involved as well, and of course, the Coast Guard took over the lighthouse duty and department in the 30s, and we're with the Coast Guard this morning. Connecting the dots here, Cindy. Uh, I'm going to say goodbye to you, but Vince, go ahead and show them. They're getting ready. Training continues. We'll have more from the Eagle here on the Hudson. Right now, though, right back to Cindy. All right, John. Thank you. It is 720. A face would have been nice. Like Her Highness Princess Anne. What about a face? This month on People... They came out with this for Linda. I see her face. I see her face. I know that this is a higher denomination. I can see that. It comes in the mail. They have names. They have faces. But what I don't see is I know they're not the only ones. <laughs> But I don't know where these other higher denominations are that wield all of this really important whatever to say, there is a serious crisis going on in New York. I don't know if you heard about it. Because nobody knows who they are or what they do or how they live or where they live or what they're in charge of or responsible for. These things aren't spoken of 
in the common area, or at least a common area that I've been held in for whatever reason, whether it's federal protected or whether it's, I don't know, because it hasn't always been protected space. There's people who've gotten through and I've gotten really hurt. It's star 1978, star 8378, Nicole Cataruza. It's Earth, solar system, Milky Way, universe, galaxy is broken. And it's Bayside Station, Bayside, New York, 11361.